Hi, everyone. Today, let's talk about the debt ceiling. Then we'll talk about First Republic leaving the S&P 500. Then we'll go over the calendars. Then we'll go over my results for the day and my, and my thoughts going into tomorrow's session. Don't forget to check out the Patreon and the Twitter. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So Janet Yellen came out and said that we could hit the debt ceiling by 1 June and that we need to raise the debt limit in order to keep the government functioning, which is a little bit earlier than expectations. So we were kind of expecting this to last through July, which gave Congress a little bit more time to get things done. Not that Congress ever gets anything done early. It makes sense that they'll leave it right to the last minute. But this does cut the timeline short at least a little bit. It is worth noting that the House did pass a bill to raise the debt limit about $1.5 trillion dollars. But of course, it comes with many stipulations to cut spending in the future. And the Democrats do not like this. And Joe Biden said that he is likely to veto the bill. And he still wants the debt limit raised without any conditions. So let's talk about that bill that passed in the House, hopefully with as little political bias as possible, because this is definitely a sticking point between the two parties. So there was a lot of bickering done, and it ended up passing by just two votes in the House. You only need a simple majority to pass in the House, which is definitely another sticking point for the Senate. They need 60 votes to pass there, and the Democrats do have the majority in the Senate, but not by enough to pass without Republican support. Some of the last minute revisions were to include tax credits for ethanol and biofuels. This is primarily important for farmers who sell a lot of their crops to create those biofuels. But my understanding is that the biggest limiting factor is that the federal government can only raise federal spending 1% per year, which would be a huge limitation on the government and honestly would be pretty healthy at this point. The government has been overspending massively. In terms of debt to GDP, the government is at the highest percentage it's been ever in the United States. And the argument is that this is okay as long as inflation is low, and it has been low for a long time, but now inflation is not low and we are continuing to spend at a rate that is much higher relative to the growth of the United States economy. Of course, the White House did not like any of these limitations, and they said that it's reckless to cause the government to potentially default on its debt for bills that it's already incurred. But if that's the case, when will we ever actually put a limit on government spending if it's not when we're running up against the actual limit that is supposed to stop us from spending more money? Ultimately, this says that congressional Republicans and the White House are very far apart on coming to a consensus quite yet. And then they talk about what I mentioned earlier. Goldman Sachs predicted the debt limit deadline to be in late July, which was the initial expectations. And now we're seeing that that's getting moved up to early June, which is a significant change. And hopefully our deadlocked government can come to a resolution. Moving over to First Republic Bank, we talked about them being purchased by J.P. Morgan Chase in the morning video, and now they're going to be leaving the S&P 500, and the question is, who is going to take their place? Because that stock is going to see a consistent inflow of money from being included in the index, and generally companies that get newly moved into the S&Ps see a pretty significant bull move. The largest company that is not included in the S&Ps is Blackstone. It's a $110 billion company, and most people think that this is the most likely case. And if that's true, this might be a good short-term trade or even a longer-term trade as it starts to see consistent investment through things like retirement accounts where money is just continuously spread across the S&P 500. They also mention that Blackstone does make a lot of sense as it is a financial company and it would move right into the financial sector as a direct replacement for First Republic. If they do get included, that would translate to about 88.5 million shares needing to be purchased by passive ETFs. Obviously, this is a massive trading volume compared to their daily average of 5 million shares. So huge, huge amount of shares would have to be purchased. And this is definitely something to pay attention to. As we start to see rumors about what company is going to be included, that's definitely going to have a positive impact on that stock, giving us some opportunity to trade. 
Moving over to the economic calendar, I did forget to mention in the Sunday video that it was a holiday for a lot of big countries, and the market was pretty quiet because of that. We did see a little bit of movement on ISM manufacturing. I did put it out on Twitter. It came in slightly better than expectations, but below 50 is still a contraction. So 47.1 is definitely a contraction, whereas ISM manufacturing prices did come back better than expectations and with some growth as they are above that 50 mark. And then looking at the three and six month bill auctions, you can see 5.12 indicating that most people expect that 25 basis points and that was priced in higher than the previous read. But in six months, you can see we're expecting a 25 basis point cut. And that's what people are pricing into the six month bill. So this is what markets are showing you. And this is a direct correlation to those expectations. Looking at the economic calendar for tomorrow, don't forget we have the JOLTS report here at 10 a.m. Eastern, which is while the market is open. Moving over to earnings, there wasn't a lot of earnings today, but tomorrow there's quite a few. We got Pfizer, AMD, HSBC, Starbucks, BP, Uber Technologies, Marathon Petroleum, Marriott, Ford, Simon Property Group, Well Tower, Lorox, pretty big staples company. That'll be interesting. But overall, I am most interested in AMD going into the after hours tomorrow. Moving over to the charts, starting with the S&Ps on the hour and the daily chart, we did get a higher high today, which we did expect expect coming off the weekend had a big rally on Friday expected this to come up and make a higher high potentially test that 41812 level which we did not do and then we ended up breaking down here on the day so slightly bearish day which is interesting not very much but 0.1% definitely negative momentum on the hourly chart definitely rolling over and establishing a lower low to the pre-market low which could certainly be negative going into tomorrow's session if this momentum continues to carry we're still above the 50 level on RSI and if we do bounce from that level it's certainly possible that we come back up and still retest this 41812 level we're still above the 41496 level and if that does break down then we have a couple of major trend lines just below at around this 413 area and I do want to highlight that here on the daily chart you can see this very powerful trend line establishing that October low as well as the December low as well as an intermediate low in February before we had that larger breakdown and now we are back above that level and that's the same level that we would potentially test if we did come back into this 413 41375 area so if this breaks down quite a bit of support definitely could see another bounce and a continuation but it is interesting to see this low going lower than that pre-market low moving over to the nasdaq here on the four hour and the daily chart similar thesis rallied up made a higher high as we expected didn't get up to that next level 324.60 still holding just above my 321.82 level we got below it briefly got back above it through a big wick overall still neutral here momentum is starting to fade which is interesting Moving over to the daily chart, you can see that same thesis materializing. We have these longer term trend lines and we are just above a lot of those levels here. And if we do break down below these, that's going to be a pretty significant break of these trend lines and certainly could see that bigger drop down. I still think we're going to see a big wick on the FOMC announcements which would give us that liquidity squeeze, potentially moving up another 300 points here on the NDQ, which would be about another 2% of upside on the NASDAQ. Finishing out this rally and this rising wedge, culminate and then start to see that bigger pullback onto the 200 SMA on the daily chart. Moving over to the Russell here, you can see we actually had some really strong movement on the Russell through a big wick all the way up to that next level, 177.33, before we got a very powerful rejection all the way back down to 174.94, down at the 9 EMA as well as the VWAP on the 4-hour chart. Now we're holding at that level. We'll see what happens. Momentum is starting to roll over. Does kind of look like a double top, but it is still a slightly higher high with a big wick. So definitely interesting right at the 50 line at RSI. So maybe we see a bounce from that level, just like we did here in the pre-market. Definitely not what you would want to see on momentum. And we still have not held above that 175.96 level on a closing basis. Moving over to the Dow, similar thesis to the SPY and the NASDAQ came up just short of that next level I was watching, 343.23, back down at the 9 EMA, very close to VWAP. Maybe we see that bounce. That would be interesting. EMAs on the MACD are still in bullish territory, but the histogram here is starting to roll over back towards bearish again. Maybe we come back down to that 
that SMA in the shorter time frames before we see that bounce. But it's certainly possible we just hold in this vicinity above 339.11 in anticipation of the FOMC on Wednesday. Moving over to Apple and Tesla, Apple threw some wicks, ended up basically unchanged, down slightly here after hours. Momentum definitely fading on the four hour chart. RSI still flat, but above the SMA. Remember, they have earnings on Thursday, and it certainly makes sense that they would probably stay in this zone until then. Moving over to Tesla, this is interesting here now. So we had a little bit of consolidation. You can see this area of highest volume sitting at 162.35 or so. We got below that area, consolidated, had a big dip, rallied back into this zone, got above this area just slightly, and then we had pretty fast rejection here. Couldn't get up to 167.34. Now we're holding back right in this consolidative area. So to me, this is bearish, right? So we came down, found that bullish price action, couldn't get the same level of bullishness coming out of that dip. And now we're getting more reaction off of that area of highest volume. Looking at momentum, definitely stepping towards bearish. RSI below the 50 level on the four hour, so still bearish in my opinion. Moving over to Microsoft and Meta, you can see Microsoft got above this level on Friday, and now we're back below that level on a closing basis going into the after hours, which is also slightly below VWAP here on the four hour chart sitting at 305.63. Definitely interesting seeing that momentum fade, RSI is now below the SMA, very little volume compared to what we've been seeing, but it certainly looks like this might be rolling over at least for a retest of this major trend line. Moving over to Meta, not much to say here. Another higher high continues to go higher. Momentum is fading and we have a huge amount of momentum on these EMAs. We haven't been this high for a very long time. And then going further back here, you can see we haven't been anywhere near those February highs for many months before that. So tons and tons of momentum continues to go higher here on Meta, showing no signs of slowing quite yet. Moving over to Amazon and Etsy, you can see both of these dumping off here. Etsy came down retesting that longer term support. We'll see what happens there. Well below my 150 level. Still in this wedge though, which is interesting, holding this level, waiting to see if we ever get a break out of this wedge. You can see we tested that upper limit and then broke down. So wedge still holding up, certainly a bullish falling wedge. Amazon, on the other hand, very weak, broke this level of support and continued basically straight down all session, getting very close to the 144 EMA sitting at $189 or below my 102.50 level. Next level of support for me is 98.96 with the EMA sitting at 189 and we have the 200 SMA very close to my 98.96 level. Moving over to Staples and Discretionary, Staples continues to rally, got well above my 77.50 level, high of day was actually 77.82, now we're sitting right at that level, retesting, if we break back below it, that would be interesting, maybe this turns into a head and shoulders type pattern, left shoulder, head, come back down, right shoulder, and then we start to see some bearishness. But right now, this is still bullish. We have a low and a higher low, high, higher high setup. Really would like to see it stay above this level and continue higher. My next higher level is all the way up at 79.90, which is quite a bit higher from here. And that would be a really big run after the rally that we've already had. So it certainly makes more sense that this is probably going to see some bearishness. You can also see the volume here was quite high, 1.56 million units on that last candle of the day, which is quite high for staples. And it was on a bearish candle. Moving over to discretionary here, you can see even weaker fell throughout the session. We're right at that trend support. We gapped down after hours. Overall looking very weak, momentum stepping down. I would expect this to break down here tomorrow. And if this gets below the 144 and 200 SMAs and it holds below that level, that's going to be a pretty significant breakdown looking back down to that 143.03 level. Moving over to transports, another very bullish day, very interesting, up more than $3 on the day. Looking at the daily chart, you can see we're right at the 55 EMA, tested that level. We're starting to see a little bit of rejection from there. Momentum on the daily chart, still stepping towards bullish. This was a huge move down and a very quick rejection, which to me means this is going to be bullish and probably push higher. So keeping an eye on this one, definitely interesting. I was watching a head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, 
and it actually had like a mini head and shoulders in that head formation, left shoulder, head, right shoulder breakdown to this bigger neckline. And it looked like we were starting to get that bigger break here before we had that very powerful move higher. But right now we're in an area where this could certainly reject and you can see how this volume is falling really dramatically, right? So we had big volume on that first day, next volume less than half and today's volume even lower, but still getting much higher prices. If we come into this area and start to reject, and it takes out this bigger neckline, that's going to be super bearish here for transports. Like I said, price action is king, and we had that dip and a strong rejection. So you do have to trade it the way that it is right now, which to me does say a little bit of bullishness, but be very cautious if you're going to be trading transports. This is a tough chart right now for sure. Moving over to semiconductors here on the hourly and the daily. You can see the double bottom that we had, rally hitting the 200 SMA, retesting the trend line. You can see that trend line on the daily chart just below VWAP and the 21 EMA on the daily chart. Certainly seems like an area where you could see one more push or two on that FOMC date before we get that bigger breakdown, move back below this neckline. So this looks like a retest of the trend line. If we get back below the trend line, then it's going to be super bearish after that retest. Momentum on the daily chart saying that we might go a little bit higher here, which does make sense. Going into FOMC, RSI on the daily chart hitting that 50 line. If it gets back above that 50 line and holds, that could be a little bit more bullish. Again, pretty tough chart here. Shorter time frame saying this is a pullback, looking for that continuation to the downside. Whereas the longer time frames are showing that big bullish movement and that this might have some follow through if we get above this trend line. Moving over to stocks above their 50 and 200 day averages here, you can see the 50 day average did get a higher high, wicked that resistance at 62.25 and then rejected, closed higher, but it was bearish on the finish. And we're right in an area where you could certainly see this start to reject and move lower. Momentum, basically zero. And if this crosses back down, that's going to be pretty bearish in my opinion. Moving over to the 200 day average here, you can see this is actually a pretty clear rejection, got very close to that trend line and wicked the 21 EMA at 5501. And it did close below the 9 EMA as well at 5376. It closed at 5367. And if it gets below the 55 and starts to roll back down, maybe looking to retest this 4355 level that would be very interesting overall i'm still watching this pattern as a potential bigger down move after the fomc moving over to the dollar here on the four hour and the daily we finally got our breakout from this level so we broke out came back retested rallied a little bit retested again and now we rallied up to the 200 sma on the four hour chart very bullish definitely looks nice doesn't mean that we can't pull back a little bit here we also have a very long-term resistance here at this trend line so looking at this area as a resistance point once we get the 25 basis points i could certainly see this start to break higher get up to this 102.98 level that would be interesting but momentum definitely bullish on the four hour rsi showing strength on the shorter time frames Similarly here on the daily chart, you can see RSI tested that SMA, found support and rallied. We're back above the 50 line here, just barely at 50.15. Overall showing some bullishness here on the dollar going into the close. Moving over to JNK and TLT on the daily charts here, you can see JNK breaking down very strongly from that 92.50 level. We closed right there on Friday. Huge gap down, huge fall below major trend support, looking down at the 55 EMA sitting at 91.29. Major support for me is at $91. Overall, super bearish, bearish momentum, bearish RSI. Moving over to TLT, similar thesis, big gap down, big follow through looking at 102.50 for potential support but overall very bearish momentum very bearish rsi and you can see that big move down through the sma and the 50 line on big volume generally means that this is going to continue Moving over to the VIX here on the hour and the weekly, you can see we ended up making a lower low after we gapped up here on the hourly. And then we closed right at the 21 EMA, finding a little bit of resistance in that area. But look at the RSI here. 
you can see the low was at the close here on Friday. And then this dip lower actually had some higher RSI at 3126 compared to 2633. Definitely some divergence here, lower prices, but higher strength. Looking to see if this is going to rally into the FOMC. Definitely makes sense that it would. Looking at the weekly chart here, you can see what that looked like. Big wick to the downside, very close to that trend line that I'm watching and ended up finding some strength into the close, which was a higher close compared to the close on Friday. You can see that here. Momentum still bearish, RSI still weak, but it's certainly showing a little bit of strength going into the close today. Moving over to my accounts, you can see I had a pretty good profit on the day, but I'm not sure how much of this is real. This software does this every once in a while where you can see my options for tomorrow's session are already almost at max profit, but let's go ahead and assume that it's real. So about $440 on profit. I did pick up a futures option position here in my IRA. This is a NASDAQ futures option position works basically the same as a stock position, but it is a smaller contract, so I can trade it naked. It's about a $26,000 position versus the Qs, which are a $32,000 position for 100 shares. So a little bit smaller position, and I can sell that naked here. Do be careful if you're going to trade these because the option pricing is quite wide here on the NASDAQ for the daily options on the mini futures contracts. Otherwise, looking at my bias for tomorrow, I continue to be pretty neutral here. My options for tomorrow, I have one 319, two 320s, and then on the call side, I have two 325s, one 326, and one 327. Overall, slightly bearish going into tomorrow's session, just based on the price action that we saw at the end of day. Certainly doesn't mean that we can't go lower and find a little bit of support in the midday and move higher overall for the session, but right now it does seem like we're moving a little bit lower after hours and potentially going to go a little bit lower even into the midday. Day. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of all of this political nonsense over the debt limit. Are we just going to raise the debt limit and continue to spend into oblivion? Or are we going to accept some pullbacks in government spending? Also, do you think Blackstone is going to get accepted into the S&P 500? And are they going to have a huge run up as a result of all the passive ETFs buying up their shares? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. Make sure you check out the Patreon. It would be really cool to get my first subscriber. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.